I said, do you have your Bibles with you? Now again, open your Bible with me in the book of Romans chapter 5 today. Romans chapter 5. Let's begin reading on verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, who was that one? Adam. Many be dead, much more the grace of God. Sabihin po natin muli, much more the grace of God. And the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ has abounded unto many. Verse 17. For if by one man's offense, that reigned by one, much more. Say that again, much more. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Now again, we found out that we are the people who receive God's abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. Now notice it didn't say reward of righteousness, it says gift of righteousness. In other words, when we got born again, that's the time that we receive God's abundance of grace. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith. It is the gift of God. It is not of your works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Not only we receive God's abundance of grace, but we receive God's gift of righteousness. Now with, the, with God's abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness that we already receive, the Bible said we shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Now it is say we shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ plus your master's degree in business administration. Now it is say you shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ plus if the color of your skin is white. Now it is say you shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ plus if you are living in you know the state of California. No, no, no. It said we shall reign in life with the abundance of grace that we already have and the gift of righteousness that we already have, we shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Amen? Do you have Jesus Christ dwelling on the inside of you? Now, if you have Jesus, then you are supposed to be ruling and reigning in life. Now, what do you mean by reigning in life? Reigning in life simply reigning in life over death and all the effects of death. Amen? Reigning in life by Jesus Christ simply means reigning in life over death and all the effects of death. Now, what are the effects of death? Sin, poverty, luck, sicknesses, diseases, depression, fear, worries. So those are the effects of death. Defeated life. So in other words, by the grace of God and the gift of righteousness, we shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Okay, now also we found out that although we already received God's abundance of grace at the new birth, and yet we found out that the grace of God can still increase in our lives. Amen. So meron po ilang mga bagay po na natutuhan po natin. Paano po yung gracia o yung biyay ng Diyos, ito po ay mag increase o lalago sa ating buhay. Can you still remember that? Now, number one, you know, uh, the Bible said God give it more grace to the world. God give it more grace to the humble. But how do we humble ourselves? Now, we humble ourselves by submitting ourselves, first of all, to God. We humble by submission. Amen. We humble by submission. Now, first of all, we submit ourselves to God. Okay, how do we submit ourselves to God? We submit ourselves to God by submitting ourselves to the Word. Because God and His Word are one. Okay? We make to make the Word of God the final authority of our lives. So the Word of God should be the final authority in our lives. We submit ourselves to the Word. Now secondly, we submit ourselves to God's delegated authorities. We submit ourselves to those authorities that God has placed over our lives. So when we do so, the Bible said God gives more grace to the humble. Now, now also we found out, that the grace of God can increase. In fact, it can be multiplied in our lives through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Second Peter chapter 1. Nakita po natin. As we grow in the knowledge of God, as we go in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, the knowledge of the Word 
then the grace of God will be multiplied in our lives. Amen? So when the grace of God is multiplied, the more the grace of God is multiplied, the more the grace of God is increased, the more we shall reign in life. Okay? Whatever, whatever problem that you may be facing, you know what? The grace of God is always sufficient for you. Remember the Apostle Paul? Okay? He was attacked by demon, demonic spirits left and right. He prayed to the Lord. And then after the third time he prayed, the Lord answered him and said, You know, my grace is sufficient for you. Glory to God. So what we need is more of the grace of God. Of course, in our, in our study, we found out that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ would be equivalent to the finished work of redemption. God's riches at Christ's expense. Okay? So, so we have now that understanding. When we talk about the grace of God or the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is equivalent to the finished work of redemption. Okay? That's why we can rest on the finished work of redemption and also the grace of God can be multiplied or can increase in our lives by us learning how to operate on God's law of seed time and harvest okay now check, turn your Bible with me once again 2nd Corinthians chapter 9 2nd Corinthians chapter 9 in verse 6 but this I say he will sow it sparingly shall also reap sparingly and he will sow it bountifully, shall it also bountifully. Now, this is God's law or principle of God's law of seed time and harvest of sowing and reaping. Now, verse 7, every man. Now, the word every man would refer to every believer in the church. Every man, every woman, every believer. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him what? So let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Okay? Now, verse 8. So in other words, when we sow our seeds by becoming cheerful givers in uh, the kingdom of God, verse 8, and God is what? God is able to make all what? I can hear you. God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things, you may abound to every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness remains forever. Okay? Now he that ministers, now God that ministers seed to the sower, but minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your what? Righteousness. That's how we reign in life. Okay? With the grace that God has given us and with the gift of righteousness, we shall reign in life. One way for us to reign in life is by operating in God's law or principle or system of seed time and harvest. Now, also we talk about several characters in the Bible who were who increase in the grace or in the favor of God by, you know, first of all, by, by submitting themselves. Nakita po natin sa buhay sa Old Testament, sa buhay po ni, ni Joseph. Now, we, we, we found out that Joseph first learned submission, you know, uh, uh, in, in the house of his father Jacob. He learned submission at home. Okay? So, that's why he had the favor of God and the favor of his father. And then, when he went out of his father's house, napakadali po para sa kanya mag-submit. Napunta siya doon sa Egypt, doon sa tahanan ni Potiphar. It was not a problem for Joseph to submit to his master, Potiphar. Because he learned submission early in life at home. Amen? Kaya nung siya lumabas sa tahanan ng kanyang ama, napunta siya doon sa Egypt, you know, it was easy for him to submit. And because of submission, Okay, because, uh, you know, he lived a life of submission, the favor of God was upon him. Okay, and then he increased in the favor of God and God was able to prosper him.